you'll notice how unhelpful the is it good or is it bad you should never use it you should always use it conversation really is because it doesn't do justice to the complexity and the diversity of what this plant really can be and part of why i bring that up is two reasons right even if we do have a problem with it if there's something difficult that's coming up with us about cannabis or use anything that has a tendency to hook us and i'll talk a little bit about how that hook happens in the mind and the brain but anything that has a tendency to hook us if we just view it as bad and try to move away from it you'll notice that what happens there is that we project the problem onto the thing right all of a sudden the problem is out there it's not in here Right. If I'm struggling with something, if I'm struggling with a compulsive use of something, right, I don't want the problem to be out there. I want it to be in here because this is where I can do something about it. This is where I can make meaning out of it. This is where I can own it. This is where I can get curious about the compulsion, curious about the struggles. Right. I just want you to notice the movement that happens with that image of cannabis, because that is a image that's still quite prevalent in the consciousness of our culture, because I think that's important too. But just aware, just noticing what our own hangups around marijuana use are, what our own hangups around being able to view it in a more clear way actually are. Because as we'll get into, one of the things that it does is really help you think divergently. It's almost as if it stimulates novelty as a value and complexity and thinking in divergent ways and thinking outside of the box. And that's a value that you can just appreciate about yourself, especially if you have a, a kind of creative life or if you feel oppressed by certain things in your life. Most people have probably heard of either an inhaled type agent, so either a vaping or burning directly as a joint or there's even drier vaporizers now. And then you have an oral ingestion such as an edible or an oil or a tincture. If you get bored and you're at a place and people are using cannabis, you can ask them about what was their first time using an edible. And most of the time the story goes, I don't know, I took some, nothing happened. I took more and then, oh, it all hit me all at once. So when you consume something as an edible, it has to enter the bloodstream via digestion and then actually gets converted to a compound called 11-hydroxy in the liver. So if you remember back to when we started, we said THC has mainly a component called delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. When you consume that, the liver converts it to a subcomponent called the 11-hydroxy version. So it is a little bit different drug actually in your body. And that process can be really variable from one person to the next. If you look at the literature, anywhere from 30, potentially maybe even two hours, it can be changed from digestion, what you ate, even maybe person to person. And the other part is that the curve, if you look at the absorption of it, isn't this nice linear curve. It's pretty flat and then gets extremely exponential. So it feels, oh, nothing's happening to you. Oh, that was like way too much. And that seems to happen over a very short period of time. So if you are using different oral or edibles, keep in mind that they can be quite delayed. Obviously, dosing is going to matter too. So like normal, start low, and then you can scale up a little bit from there. If you're not sure, probably wait longer than you think you would need to wait. With inhaled agents themselves, you're actually getting the Delta 9 component into the lungs. Because the lungs have such a huge blood supply right next to them, the effects are <clears throat> happen within a really short period of time. This again can be a pro or a con depending on how you look at it. The pro is that you'll notice the effect sooner and then it's gonna taper off much sooner. Edibles can last much longer and they have a very slow onset. So one of the main reasons so many individuals experience undesirable effects, such as anxiety and paranoia with cannabis, is due to a lack of awareness around their nervous system state before choosing to connect with the plant. It is important to note that cannabis, and more specifically, Delta 9 THC, does trigger the sympathetic nervous system, aka our fight or flight system, upon onset. And if you are already upregulated from things such as too much caffeine, poor stress management, lack of sleep, etc., and you then connect with cannabis, it increases the risk that you will experience these states as a result. 
Now I share this because now that you are aware of this, you will be much better prepared to handle these challenges should they happen to you at one point or another without having an increased risk of panic attacks and things like this. My best recommendation in this category for each of you is to keep some hemp on hand. And if you do find you are overly upregulated and are nervous to engage with cannabis, to engage with hemp flower instead, as hemp will allow you to experience many of the benefits of cannabis without the increased sympathetic nervous system activation, which typically, as aforementioned, stems from Delta 9 THC. Knowing these things, knowing dosage is very helpful because if I microdose, I can get these effects a little bit, right? It makes sense. But if I take massive amounts of it, I'm thrown into that chaos. I'm pulled way out of my localized perspective to the point where I might even get disconnected from it. And that's how it quickly becomes an escape. So one of the things I like about thinking about it ceremonial is ceremonially is that you start to have to put the thing about ceremony is that there are borders to a ceremony and there's a sort of sacredness. So we start to go into it with intention and we start to say, I'm going to use it in this very particular way and I'm going to honor the plant and I'm going to open to it and I'm going to try to communicate with it because it's very intelligent and it will help you get to your intentions if you use it that way, but you don't have to. One of the ways it's used, if we look at spirituality from a depth psychological perspective, what it means when the veil is thinned between the human and the unconscious realms, that in a spiritual perspective is the spiritual dimension, right? So it can thin that veil too. So if you're somebody that's very sensitive to the archetypal and the spiritual, it's something that that can be amplified. And you want like a good kind of ceremonial container in order to contain those energies that are coming through. So that's also something to consider. It can also be very helpful as a meditative tool, but I think that typically in smaller doses because it can be too divergent and too jumpy to try to meditate with it sometimes. And one of the ways you'll use it, you'll see it used often is to be mixed with a more masculine plant like tobacco or hoppe, something that's a little more directive because it helps focus it a little bit. So you'll see people like roll a 50-50 joint or something like 50 tobacco and 50 cannabis. I find that to be like way too intense of an experience. But when it comes to ceremonial use, that's something to consider. The number one way to experience challenges within the cannabis space is to purchase cannabis from unknown origins. Now for the reasons aforementioned, including method of cultivation, potential additives used, and the energy of the cultivator, and the inability to know cannabinoid slash terpene content, make sure you are careful when choosing to connect with cannabis that is of unknown origin. Now this is not to say that you should avoid it at all costs, as some cannabis that is not found at dispensaries can still be high quality in nature. However, it is to say to use extra caution when choosing to embark upon this path. As within the black market, there are zero regulations, and many black market dealers do not care about the long-term health of their customers.